biggest game releases. On November 1st, anyone nostalgic for the glory days of Newgrounds will be happy to hear that the classic Flash game Alien Hominid is not only getting an HD remaster, but it's also getting a brand new sequel with Alien Hominid Invasion. Those are both hitting PC, the Xboxes, and Nintendo Switch, and you won't even have to install a Flash plugin on the school library computers to play. You can go off the rails in Roller Coaster Tycoon Adventures Deluxe on all the consoles, which is a more casual spin on the beloved theme park management slash negligent carny simulator. Still on that day is Song of Nunu, a League of Legends story, which is a standalone single-player adventure set in that universe involving a boy and a yeti, and it's coming to Switch and PC. On November 2nd, Dead Island 2's house expansion drops for everything that that game's on, and this DLC will have you heading to some techno-billionaire's death cult compound in Malibu, which sounds like more fun for anybody who dug whacking zombos in the head with electric baseball bats in that base game. Also on the second is the farming and life sim My Time at Sandrock on PC, Switch, PS5, and Xbox Series. This was originally slated for release back in September, but the devs needed more time to sand off the rough edges, so let's hope it's finally ready to rock this month. Still that day, we've got Phantom Blade Executioners on PS4, PS5, and PC, a fast-paced 2D action RPG with a Vampire Hunter D delightful hand-drawn anime art style, not to be confused with Phantom Galaxies, a totally unrelated open-world space shooter with mechs, which is only on PC for now. There's also Played Up on all the consoles, which is an overcooked-like roguelite that has you serving customers while also designing and managing your restaurant on the fly, and it's published by Yogg's Cast Games, so fans of their content might find it especially charming. If you'd rather chill out while cleaning up instead of panicking while making a mess, the surprise hit Power Wash Simulator is coming to VR by way of Meta Quest 2 and 3, and despite the high PSI you're spraying water at, this game is refreshingly low pressure. If you'd rather clean up the streets of Detroit in a metaphorical sense, you can grab Robocop Rogue City on PS5, Xbox Series, and PC. This will supposedly have you solving some mysteries and exploring a complex branching narrative shooting dudes in the d and throwing dumpsters around is the titular cybernetic policeman from Paul Verhoeven's seminal and other bodily fluid infused 1987 classic. I wish I could say you can buy that for a dollar, but it's actually only 50 bucks, which is still cheaper than a lot of games these days, but hey, I'd buy that for a dollar. Somehow we're still only halfway through November 2nd, and it's a big day for games with two in the title. A few other notable sequels are Star Ocean, the second story R, the 2.5D remake of the beloved JRPG series' second entry. That's on the PlayStations, the PC, and the Switch. The Smurfs 2, The Prisoner of the Greenstone, is definitely not the second Smurfs game ever made, but it's a sequel to 2021's Mission Vilief, and it's out that day for everything as well. If you want something a little more intellectually stimulating than helping those blue socialists evade Gargamel, the Talos Principle 2 is out that day for new gen and PC as well. The very cerebral first-person philosophical sci-fi puzzle game is somehow made by the same people behind the Dumb as Rock Serious Sam series, but it looks like it'll stimulate different parts of your brain. Finally, on the second is Thirsty Suitors, a narrative adventure from the studio that gave us Falcon Age. Between dating, cooking, skateboarding, and dance-offs, there's so much going on that it's kinda hard to summarize it, but it looks to be heavily influenced by both Scott Pilgrim and Southeast Asian culture. That's on everything. On November 3rd, 2023, DreamWorks All-Star Kart Racing gives the classic mascot racer treatment to Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, and that guy who has taken three movies, five direct-to-video shorts, and a whole TV show to figure out how to train his dragon, and I still don't think he has it down. I specify November 3rd, 2023, because it sounds like a game that might have come out 12 years ago. That is on all the current platforms, and possibly we. Who knows? We clean it! We. A more serious racing game is out that day as well, EA Sports WRC, which as far as I can tell does not have Shrek in it, though I could be mistaken, and hey, a swamp could make for a really fun rally course. That's on the new consoles and PC. Still on the third is a game that sounds like something I would make up as a joke on a podcast and spend way too long photoshopping box art for to post on Twitter only to get two retweets, but I assure you it is a real product. Ebenezer and the Invisible World is a 2D Metroidvania starring one of popular culture's most iconic and enduring Ebenezers. Eb Ebenezer Scrooge. This time around though, Scrooge is reimagined as a hero, and he's also a vaguely sexy anime man, and I don't know which of these concepts would have the ghost of Charles Dickens rattling its chains more angrily, but that's on everything. Wake me up when there's an open world Great Expectations RPG with Mrs. Havisham as a romance option. That sounds delightful. Still that day, you can load up Microsoft Flight Simulator on Xbox Series and PC and zip around Arrakis in an ornithopter in the new Dune DLC to kill some time until Chapter 2 finally hits theaters four months later than expected next March. Man, I want to see that movie. 
If you would like to embarrass yourself in a variety of different ways in rapid succession, great news because WarioWare Move It hits Nintendo Switch, and I am so excited for this stupid game. I have incredibly fond, blurry memories of playing WarioWare Smooth Moves on Wii in a cramped dorm room back in college, and I will be celebrating my 37th, I think, birthday by attempting to relive those glory days with this new installment and probably throwing my back out in the process because that's what you do when you're in your late 30s. My back! Oh, my back! On November 6th, people who like managing footballs have their work cut out for them because Football Manager 2024 comes to PC, Football Manager 2024 console comes to Xbox One, Xbox Series, PS4 and PS5, Football Manager 2024 mobile comes to mobile devices, and Football Manager 2024 touch comes to Nintendo Switch, and I'm assuming they're calling it that because it has touchscreen controls, not because it's about touch football rather than tackle, but I could be mistaken. Still on the 6 is The Invincible, the hard sci-fi first-person adventure heavily borrowing from the works of Polish sci-fi author Stanislav Lem. He's the guy who wrote Solaris, which was adapted into a film by Andrzej Tarkovsky, who's the same guy who directed Stalker, which also inspired the Shadow slash Heart of Chernobyl games. So that's a bit of a walk, but if you like video games inspired by Eastern European genre fiction from that particular time period, maybe give this one a whirl. That's on new gen and PC. On November 7th, you apparently did so much power washing in VR that all those spiders living in your rain gutters and under your porch went inside the house and now you gotta go in there and kill them with fire, among other things, in Kill It With Fire VR. This game is definitely not realistic, but if you're an arachnophobe, it still might be enough to rustle your jimmies. I'm extremely spider averse and I threw on the non-VR version a while back and I only made it a few levels before I had to nope out and I will say a hard nope to the VR version because I don't need to be that squeamish. Anyway, if that sounds like a good time to you, clean the cobweb off that PSVR 2 and take it for a spin. Still in the 7th is the digital version of Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2. The physical release isn't until December 2nd, if that matters at all, but that is yet another Smash-like featuring your favorite Nicktoons like Rocco, Ren and Stimpy, the Angry Beavers, and a whole bunch of other more recent ones that I have no strong feelings about because I am old and tired. Wake me up when they add Stick Stickly as a playable character and make an entire stage based on face from Nick Jr. Another old non-Nicktoon cartoon that I watched on Nickelodeon is getting a game that day as well. Tintin Reporter, Cigars of the Pharaohs, which I am unironically really excited about. This this gamifies the classic Hergé comic in a cinematic third-person adventure with what looks like some platforming and flying and a bunch of puzzles. The preview we put up was really positive. That's on everything but Switch, and I'm super interested. On November 9th, it's a big day for people who like dragons because, like a dragon, Gaiden, the man who erased his name, sees the return of Kazuma Kiryu, the former protagonist of the series formerly known as Yakuza, who faked his own death and disappeared forever at the end of Yakuza 6, The Song of Life, but who reappeared shortly thereafter in 2020's Yakuza Like a Dragon, and he's going to be back in a starring role as one of the main protagonists in next year's Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. This game, however, is connecting the dots between all of that, and ultimately all that stuff I just said doesn't really matter because this is a game where you can kick a bunch of dudes asses using gadgets like rocket shoes and exploding cigarettes, which sounds like fun. That's on the Xboxes, the Playstations, and the PC. If you thought November 9th was a single Dragon Day, you are horribly mistaken because it is in fact a double Dragon Day, and in addition to kicking dudes' asses in Like a Dragon Guide N, you can do it the old-fashioned 2D way in Double Dragon Collection, which collects six of Bimmy and Jimmy's most notable outings, a few of which haven't gotten official ports in a very long time. That's on Switch, PC, PS4, and Xbox One. If you prefer Dungeons over Dragons, well, you're in luck too, because Dungeons 4 hits new gen and PC that day as well. Can you believe it? Dungeons and Dragons on the same day? This script practically writes itself. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm just kidding. It's actually a lot of work. On November 10th, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 comes to everything but Switch, and we heard a bunch of rumors that Activision would do the unthinkable and actually not release a new Call of Duty this year, and instead was going to put out a major expansion to last year's Modern Warfare 2. Well, surprise, because that expansion expanded so much that it is now a full-fledged, full price release, which will inevitably be one of the best-selling games of the year. In addition to being the release date of something famous for coming out every year, it's also the alleged release date for a game that's famous for not coming out? The day before, the massive post-apocalyptic survival game had a reveal that seemed too good to be true and quickly became the most wish-listed game on Steam. It was supposed to be out in June of last year, and then the studio announced that they were switching engines, and it was briefly delisted due to some trademark thing. On the 14th, Coral Island 1.0 drops. This is a Kickstarter darling that takes the old Harvest Moon farming sim formulator and gives it a nice tropical spin. I guess it is technically a cozy game, but cozy makes me think of sweaters and tea, and this seems more like a board shorts and umbrella drinks kind of game. Anyway, that's on PC and New Gen. Fans of Invincible, the comic, or the show might have missed the news that there's a little game on the way. Invincible Presents Adam Eve is coming to PC on the 14th, and it gives Invincible's better half the Japanese dating sim treatment. It's not a big, huge, open-world action game, but it's something. 
Still on the 14th is Karma Zoo, which I spent 10 minutes Googling and I still couldn't quite figure it out. But from what I can tell, it's a multiplayer platformer where you can play as a variety of different animals with different abilities, and the idea is to use those abilities to assist and be assisted by a bunch of other rando players online. And there's also competitive multiplayer if you'd rather not play nice. So somewhere between Duck Game and Journey, I guess. I could be way off, but it sounds interesting. That's on PS5, Xbox Series, PC, and Switch, and it supports crossplay. On the 15th, we've got another interesting sounding indie with American Arcadia, which is a cinematic puzzle game that is part 2.5D platformer and part first person adventure. And it's about a guy named Trevor escaping from a reality show. So if your name is Trevor, or you think it sounds like a cool idea for a video game or both, you might enjoy this one. Sound off in the comments, Trevors. That's on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Also on the 15th is the PS5 and Xbox versions of Teardown, the hit PC game about tearing down, which looks like a very good time for blowing off some steam, and it's nice to see that it's finally on more platforms besides steam. Also that day, The Last Faith, a dark gothic Metroidvania Soulsborne, which is very clearly heavily leaning towards the Vania and Bourne ends of those genres. That's on everything. If everything I said made you want to go stab things, well, great news, because on the 16th, Assassin's Creed Nexus VR takes the historically and historical third-person assassination game and makes it a first-person virtual reality affair. You probably could have gleaned that from the title alone, but if you haven't been paying attention, apparently they pulled it off pretty well. Jumping from high places into haystacks in VR is one of those things that could be vomit-inducing or exhilarating or both, but I guess it's I guess it's pretty pretty cool. Anyway, I'm I'm curious to check that out. That is on Meta Quests 2 and 3. I keep hearing good things about the Lovecraftian fishing game Dredge, and if you're one of the people who's been saying those good things, you'll probably appreciate that it's already getting some DLC with the Pale Reach expansion, which is coming to all the platforms that Dredge is already on. At this point, the mention of the game Flashback might give you, well, flashbacks to the mid-90s and getting stuck on that cinematic puzzle platformer's early jungle levels. Well, great news, it's getting a brand new sequel creatively titled Flashback 2, despite it being technically the third game that's on everything digitally with physical versions coming next year. The Xboxes and Playstations get Jagged Alliance 3 that day as well. This is the long-awaited sequel to one of the hottest tactical RPGs of 1999, and thankfully it sounds like it was worth the wait, so I'm happy to hear it's coming to more platforms. Finally, on the 16th, Johanne the Parhelion Blaze in the Deep Blue is a 2D Metroidvania rooted in the Love Live Sunshine anime series. That's on everything, and if we're being completely honest here, it made the list because I wanted to say the full title out loud. Speaking of blue stuff, on November 17th, Bluey the video game is coming to everything. This is the first game based on the hit kids show that a lot of parents are also very fond of, present company included, and this looks to incorporate some activities from the show, like Keepy Uppy and the Magic Xylophone, but it's also got a little campaign and lets you explore some familiar settings in co-op, which I'm totally going to do with my daughter. The Naruto x Baruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections, which will revisit a bunch of iconic battles from the anime, as well as telling an original story, and it's got a roster of 130 playable characters, which is utterly bananas. That's on everything. And the title kind of makes me think it's an ad for a dating service. Anyway, I don't think it'll have any dating, but Persona 5 Tactica will send your favorite waifus and husbandos into an alternate dimension where they will squat up with the local freedom fighters to overthrow the oppressive regime that is controlling this strange realm. And weirdly, it takes place concurrently with the events of Persona 5, which it's, it's kind of odd that revolutionary work never came up in conversation, but hey, everyone's got a lot going on in Persona 5. That's on Switch. Also on Switch is Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, the top to bottom modern overhaul of the beloved 1996 Squaresoft RPG. This game looked amazing on Super NES back in the day, and it probably didn't need a full modern overhaul, but absolutely nobody is complaining that it's getting one. Still on the 17th, you can do some slicing and dicing in VR with Tiger Blade, which is on PSVR 2, and you can do some strategic clicking on stuff in Warhammer Age of Sigmar Realms of Ruin, which is on new gen and PC. Worldless, a trippy minimalist platformer we told you about last month, got hit with a delay, but it'll come to everything on the 21st. On November 28th, Last Train Home hits PC. This is an on-rails approach to real-time strategy, quite literally, as you've got to get a train full of soldiers safely through a war zone, and outside of combat, you can expect a fair amount of management and keeping tabs on the well-being of your troops. It seems a little like FTL, but considerably slower than the speed of light. Also, it is supposedly based on real events, showing what the Czechoslovak Legion went through in the wake of the Great War while traveling through Siberia, so definitely not a cozy game, but it sounds like it might pair well with bleak winter weather and seasonal depression. On November 29th, there's the first-person mystery Forest Grove, which is on everything but Switch, and a day later, Asterix and Obelix slap them all too. Last month, we told you about Asterix and Obelix Heroes, which is a deck battler. We showed gameplay from Slap Them All, and this week, I promise you we are showing the right gameplay. That is on PS4, PS5, Series X, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Last month, we told you the Robin Hood-infused multiplayer game Gangs of Sherwood was coming out for PS5, Xbox Series, and PC, and it sure would have, but it got delayed twice since then, and now it's coming out November 30th, assuming they don't kick it down.